Welcome everyone to the Mental Health Commission's update on how Living Well in Focus is going. I'm Catherine Larry, the Mental Health Commissioner of New South Wales, and I'm really pleased that you've been able to join us here today. I'd like to start by inviting Auntie Donna Ingram to welcome us to country. Hello everyone. It's my great pleasure to be here with permission from my elders to offer you welcome to country for the Living Well in Focus 2020-2024 Report 1, Stock Take of the Work Ahead. It gives me pride to represent my community in this important cultural protocol. It shows respect for and recognition to the unique position of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people in Australian culture and history. We are presenting to you from the traditional land of the Walla Madigal to a of the 29th end of the Eora Nation which is bordered by the Hawkesbury, the Georges and the Nepean Rivers. I'm an Aboriginal woman who proudly identifies with the Wiradjuri Nation through my family connections from Central West New South Wales. I was born on Eora country and I've had the privilege to live, work and raise my four children on this land for most of my life. My family has grown and I'm now a proud grandmother to Aaliyah, Elijah, Kalila, Lakota and Jack Jr. My wish for my grandchildren is to grow up happy and healthy in a safe and inclusive society that offers them quality health care, both physical and mental. I acknowledge the Gadigal and all nations represented today. Their spirits and ancestors will always remain with the land Mother Earth, and I thank them for their ongoing custodianship. I pay my respects to our elders, both past and present, and we must never forget the sacrifices made by our leaders to create a better future for Aboriginal people. I do this as a reminder and as a tribute to Elders and those who have gone before us to fight for land rights, justice and equity for our communities. I extend my respects to Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people from all clans and nations who are present today. I also recognise our non-Aboriginal sisters and brothers who walk beside us to support effective health and wellbeing programs. At this point, I would normally say I now offer you a warm and sincere welcome to the land of the Walla Madigal of the Eora Nation and wish you a safe stay on the land and safe travel from the land. I have the same wish for you all, whichever country you may be viewing from. On behalf of my community and the Walla Madigal, I wish you all an interesting and productive time at this webinar that will provide an overview of the work completed so far, as well as what work is still ahead which is guided by the voice of people with lived experience of mental health issues, recognising their autonomy and supporting their recovery, emphasising their personal and social needs and preferences. In closing, we remember that this is, was and always will be Aboriginal land. Thanks everyone and have a great day. Thank you, Auntie Donna. I would also like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land upon which I'm joining in today, the Gadigal people of the Euro Nation, and to pay my respects to Elders past, present and emerging. And to also acknowledge the centrality of social and emotional wellbeing in um, Aboriginal culture and how much we can learn from Aboriginal culture in how we do and think about mental health and wellbeing, recovery and community. So welcome everyone. Today we're talking about Living Well in Focus. And as you know, in 2014, the um, Commission released Living Well, which was a 10 year strategy for reform for mental health in New South Wales. Halfway through that decade of reform, the Commission embarked upon a midpoint review to understand how things were going and how experiences were improving how program and reform was tracking to enable us to reflect and focus on what work needs to be done in the second half of that decade. Last year in November, Living Well in Focus was tabled in Parliament, so now it's 12 months old. And today we will be talking about the first 12 months, a report back, a stock take on what agencies have said they're doing, what they plan to do, and to share that with you. It's very important for the Commission to not only engage and consult with the community, have your voices in our work and in our advice to government, but to report back to you on how things are tracking so that you too can see where the work is being focused and what you can look forward to in how agencies will be responding. 
So today we'll be um, having a number of um, sessions that we'll be talking about, and we will be looking at not only the um, the work of the agencies, but we'll also be highlighting good practice, and we'll be looking at how um, the progress in living well has been across the system and across the agencies. We'll be having a, um, a highlight, and we'll be having um, a number of our deputy commissioners joining with us, as well as um, one of our directors, to not only highlight where effort has been made, but also to discuss what the um, priorities have been and the responses have been of agencies. But um, I'd like to start by giving you a quick overview of the commission in a quick 90 minute video, just so for those of you who are new to us understand what our role and our purpose is. And to then uh, follow that, we'll, we will kick off with a video, which is a snapshot of Living Well in Focus. And that will set you up for understanding the feedback, and not only that, but also understanding the priorities and the directions. So I'll speak to you after these quick videos. Thanks. The Mental Health Commission is a small, independent government agency with a big task to improve the mental health and well-being of everyone in New South Wales. We do this in three ways. By exploring and understanding issues that affect the mental health and well-being of the community, to find better or new ways that support people, their families and carers to live well on their own terms by calling for change, to improve mental health and opportunities to live well with strong connections to family and social networks, community and culture, education and work, by preparing plans and reports for government to chart the course for mental health reform and hold up a mirror to show how things are moving. Importantly, we hold people's experiences of mental health issues and of caring at the heart of our work. Lived experience guides all we do. We connect with people and communities through listening and conversations and collaborate with organisations, government, the workforce and researchers. We work collectively with the common aim to improve mental health services and support for people across New South Wales. So please, Join with us. Living Well is a whole of government strategic plan for improving mental health developed by the Mental Health Commission of New South Wales to guide reform from 2014 to 2024. Five years into the decade-long plan, we undertook a mid-term review. We visited over 60 communities, towns and services to check in and learn firsthand about what was working well and where greater effort was needed. The result is Living Well in Focus 2020 to 2024, a strategic plan for community recovery, well-being and mental health in New South Wales. The refreshed strategic priorities provide the best opportunity to strengthen community recovery and well-being, strategically invest in well-being and mental health, and ensure we have the right workforce for the future. Our seven key actions for reform include strengthening community recovery and resilience, improving Aboriginal social and emotional well-being, embedding lived experience, supporting and including families and carers, investing in evidence-based community well-being and mental health supports, improving pathways for people with a mental health issue in forensic mental health services and custody, and enabling a skilled, well-resourced and compassionate workforce. Together, with input from the mental health workforce, services, government and the community, the voice of people with lived experience underpins all 24 actions in Living Well in Focus. Living Well in Focus 2020 to 2024 calls for scaling up 
of what is already working well and to further invest in proven models of care so together we can improve recovery, well-being and the mental health of our community. Visit our website to find out more. Back. Welcome back. I hope you found those videos of interest and really hopefully that they'll help you understand and have an insight into what Living Well in Focus was really all about. But before we start the formal part of the um, session today, I'd like to invite Deputy Commissioner Tim Heffernan to do an acknowledgement of lived experience. Donald for that. Um, and thank you to Auntie Donald for that uh, wonderful welcome to country. I'm um, sitting on Darawal country down in Wollongong at the moment and um, just reflecting on the on the beauty of, of the lands that we all live on. Um, I'm honoured to be able to acknowledge the lived experience of people with mental health issues, mental illness, or however we choose to describe ourselves, to describe our experience. And I'd also like to acknowledge those who love and those who care for us when we need, when we need to be cared for. Um, I'd like to also acknowledge the significant uh, contributions to the Mental Health Commission's reforms to the bettering of this world for people who live with mental health issues. So thank you. I think we have another slide about some support that's available. So you see here the support that's available if people um, are distressed by anything that we're looking at today. I don't think that will happen, but there you are if you'd like to take um, those numbers down. Okay, thank you. I'll just hand back to Catherine now. Um, to him. Today you'll hear not only from um, Deputy Commissioner Tim Heffernan, but Pam Rutledge, Jenna Roberts and Daniel Angus and our Director of System Reform, Julie Dixon. So I'll hand over to Pam um, to talk about strategic priorities and focus areas with Tim. As we were saying, as, Catherine, um, that's, as we were saying, that's the phrase of the, of the year, isn't it? Um, so, as you will have seen from uh, from the video, um, Living Well in Focus, um, we attempted and we did keep it very, very focused um, on the strategic issues facing the New South Wales um, community at this time. So, we had three strategic priorities that are shown on the screen there. And under those seven focus areas, and then within those, we identified 24 actions for reform. Now we don't have time today to go through these, but I would, oh, sorry, I would encourage. <laughs> I just love this. Oh, sorry, everybody. Um, I would encourage you to have a look at the report that is on the website and to see how the report addresses all of these actions um, and tells you what all the agencies have been doing around them and what their plans are for the years ahead. Now, Tim and I are just going to focus on a couple of these priorities just to give you a bit of a sense of um, of how the work has been going. So, um, first of all, I wanted to talk about um, uh, this point here about investing in evidence-based community wellbeing and mental health supports. So, one of the things we were most concerned about in putting together Living Well in Focus was how we can um, really reform the system as a whole. And so there are a few pieces of work that are really about systemic reform. And one of them is being led by Treasury to bring together all the agencies and have a thorough look at where the investment is in community wellbeing and mental health and how it can be best used into the future and to identify where there are service gaps. Um, and an example of that work is, that's happening on the ground is 
the a project that has been um, led by New South Wales Police um, to better address how police and ambulance can together respond to people who are in mental health crisis. Um, and, you know, we all know how, how concerned people are and have been about the, the really traumatic experience of being brought into hospital by the police or even by ambulance. It, it's a very traumatising process. So police, ambulance and, um, and clinic, clinical resources have been coming together in a program called PACER, which has been piloted in New South Wales and is now being rolled out. And there are now 12 of these programs operating across New South Wales to bring together the police, ambulance and clinical resources. So um, clinical team support staff who can help with de-escalation and supporting people in crisis so that the need to go into an emergency department at a crisis point is much, much reduced. Now that work is being supported by some work being led by the Commission to build a better planning tool to ensure that all the um, the great um, programs and services that have been um, implemented over recent years around better community support and peer support to ensure that we can build those into regional planning. And that work is being led by the Commission now and, and is um, to develop a cross-government regional planning tool to create a more joined up system of care and support, uh, which was another uh, critical question identified through the Living Well process, how important it was to provide better opportunities for people to navigate and find the support they needed. I'll, I'll hand over to Tim. I'm, I'm very excited and very happy to be able to uh, talk about this particular spotlight, which is on growing the peer and care of peer workforce. It is something so close to my heart and I, um, something that has been the focus, of, a focus of the Commission since its inception. And also, I think the work that we're doing joins up so well with what's happening locally, regionally and nationally in terms of building structures and, and strength for the peer workforce. So we, we, we need to recognise and acknowledge, as I said in, in my acknowledgement, the value of expertise from people with lived experience of mental health issues and caring. It is a critical element of system reform. Peer workers are in a unique position to build connections and rapport with people by, by inspiring hope and modelling recovery and leading that reform statewide. The Ministry of Health is in the process of developing a peer workforce framework uh, to support the, the workforce and also provide guidance on, scope, on the scope of practice, career pathways, leadership roles and regional development. The Ministry of Health has previously invested in the South East and New South Wales Regional Peer Workforce Framework, something that's available for other local health districts to use. And it will join up um, seamlessly, hopefully seamlessly, with the National Mental Health Peer Workforce Development Guidelines, which will be re released on the 1st of December. These sorts of things are, are, are so significant to, to our workforce. It, it just provides us with the, um, the way forward. Um, you might know that additionally, 70 positions have been created in the Towards Zero Suicide Initiative, where we have peer workers working in alternatives to ED called safe havens and also working in assertive um, suicide prevention outreach teams with, with clinicians. Um, that, that's, that's such a, a wonderful initiative. And recently, uh, with the announcement of the 130 million um, additional funding for mental health, we welcome the 18 new Aboriginal care navigators and average 18 Aboriginal peer workers 
who will which will link um, Aboriginal people to culturally appropriate mental health and suicide prevention services. In other ways, peer workers, well, peer workers can work elsewhere as well, not just in mental health. So the Department of Communities and, Communities and Justice are also employing uh, peer support workers across a range of housing and homelessness services. Finally, embedding a real co-design and real co-production approach with people with lived experience and their families and carers is crucial to system reform to achieve better experiences of care and outcome for people with mental health issues. I'd like now to hand over to the Commission's Director of System Reform, Julie Dixon, who's going to go through the monitoring and reporting framework. Thanks, Julie. Thank you, Tim, and good afternoon, everyone. The Commission's role is to monitor and report on the progress being made by government and other agencies and organisations who are delivering on the 24 actions across the three strategic priorities which are in circles within this framework. And these actions are designed to support a whole of system and whole of government approach guided by people with lived experience, caring and kinship groups to achieve better mental health and wellbeing for the people of New South Wales. But with the significant challenges that so many ex communities have recently experienced, particularly uh, have led to higher levels of psychological distress, anxiety and depression, particularly amongst children and young people. And it is only by working together and coordin coordinating our efforts to support our young people and families by building system capacity to meet the increased demand for services and supporting our communities to lead the recovery that we will be able to achieve this vision. Next slide, please. Over the past few months, we have sought, fee sought feedback from government agencies to find out what they're doing or planning to do to, to deliver on these 24 actions. And we were extremely pleased to see that every government agency is focused on supporting people's mental health and wellbeing and their recovery, including their workforce. And we identified around 70 partnerships between agencies including community managed organisations and with people with lived experience in caring. And a total of 19 government agencies have described their work across the 24 actions. The most commonly identified area of work underway is to build positive relationships and strengthen partnerships with Aboriginal people and organisations to improve Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander social and emotional wellbeing. And it's particularly encouraging to see that many government agencies are also working in partnership with communities to tailor their responses to the local context and fill the gaps in service delivery and supports for priority populations. Training and capacity building of the workforce to further embed trauma-informed care and family and care inclusive practice across the system is also being actioned by many agencies. The first report is now published on the Mental Health Commission's website. And in 2023, we will then develop a midterm report which will describe the achievements to date. And a final report will be produced in 2025, which will describe the outcomes over the five year timeframe of this strategic plan. Next slide, thanks. The Commission will continue to support and advocate for agencies and organisations to embed the voice of people with lived experience, caring and kinship groups through approaches such as co-design and co-production to optimise people's experiences of care and support. We will also be identifying and promoting innovative services and programmes, as well as emerging evidence-informed practice that prevent people from experiencing poor mental health, a focus on early intervention and recovery and compassionate care. And importantly, the Commission will continue to engage and collaborate with agencies and communities to ensure that the Living Well in Focus strategic plan is implemented over the next few years. I'm going to now hand over to Deputy Commissioner Daniel Angus to reiterate the vision of Living Well. Thank you. To government agencies to reflect on. Uh, so to finish up, uh, we wanted to reiterate uh, what it is that Living Well is here to achieve. And uh, the vision is that the people in New South Wales have the best opportunity to have good mental health 
and well-being can live well in their community on their own terms. Uh, an acknowledgement that all of us have the opportunity for good mental health and, feel, and to feel good about ourselves and our lives uh, as defined by us. So uh, let's move on to our uh, Q&A session. Um, we've had quite a few questions uh, submitted uh, when audience members registered for the event. So we'll go through the uh, about three of these today. Uh, if you have any other questions, please feel free to post these in the chat. Uh, whilst we won't have time to answer further questions today, we will answer them in a fact sheet that will be uploaded to the Commission's website. Uh, I'll be joined by my fellow Deputy Commissioner Jenna Roberts for this Q&A session. So uh, the first question, what is the most important uh, living well in focus objective for improving the experience of mental health carers? And in answering this, uh, I, I point you to the Action 12 item, the inclusion of families, uh, carers and kin. It's one of the uh, specific recommendations in Living Well in Focus that responds to the poor experiences of families and carers for people living with a mental health issue who often report being excluded, isolated and unsupported when it comes to making decisions about the care of their persons with a mental health issue. As part of this action, we put it to government agencies to reflect on how well they are including the people that are socially and emotionally part of an individual's well-being and identify and report to the Commission on their current and planned activities to engage families and carers uh, in things like frontline service delivery, including family inclusive practice models of care, uh, includes service planning, design and evaluation of services and supports, and five agencies responded to Action 11, uh, DCJ, Education, Sport, uh, Police and Health, with activities that revolve around improving family and community connections with key initiatives and programs underway that invest in these relationships. Increasing the resources and support networks for parents and carers so they have better access to information, services and supports for families and carers, and providing education and training for both service providers and users to raise awareness and appreciation of the valuable contributions carers make to society. <laughs> and to ensure that carers are recognised, acknowledged and supported in service delivery. Uh, how are we keeping tabs on how well we are doing as a system to improve the experience of mental health carers? Well, the Commission is tracking how well the system is providing opportunities for family or friends and family and carers to be involved in treatment and care. Over the last five years, from 2015 to 16 to 2019 to 20, most New South Wales consumers reported that their opinions about the involvement of family or friends were respected. 90% in the community and 87% in hospital settings in 2019 to 20. However, from the carer's perspective, the 2020 National Carer Survey shows that New South Wales carers report experience varying, uh, very little carer support uh, when they access mental health services for the persons they care for, with only one in four carers reported uh, that the mental health services asked about their needs as carers. The actions that government agencies so far are promising in the fact that carers' needs cannot be overlooked, uh, the Commission will continue to track the progress being made in this area in partnership with New South Wales Mental Health Carers. Now I'll hand over to uh, Jenna uh, with the next question. Thanks, Daniel. Uh, the second question is, does the panel have any ideas on how the lived experience workforce can partner with Indigenous healers or Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander healers? Has the working government got a vision for the healing groups deployed by an online program to transverse the tyranny of distance, providing impact into rural and remote communities? In answering this, um, I'd like, you know, I think it's a Quite a complex question in that one question. It's a very well thought out one. So to the person who submitted it. Um, recently, the New South Wales government announced 18 new Aboriginal care navigators and 18 Aboriginal peer workers, which will link Aboriginal people into culturally appropriate and safe mental health and suicide prevention services. I think uh, is actually Tim who touched on that before. In all its work, the Commission seeks to embed the voices of lived experience including those of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander with activists opportunities to connect with diverse communities in South Wales. Uh, and that's not just but that's actually an action that I see every day working with the Commission. This approach can and does include visits to rural and remote communities as we seek to understand the needs and support 
um, at the development and responses of culturally safe in, uh, services, how they can improve the capacity of Aboriginal people uh, to live well and live better on their own terms. A number of living well in folk actions reflect this approach. Action 8 requires New South Wales government agencies to increase the number of Aboriginal mental health workers to meet the demand for culturally safe responses in the social and emotional well-being needs of Aboriginal people across New South Wales. Key responses include Youth Justice New South Wales is exploring options to sponsor Aboriginal psychology students to complete qualifications with a guaranteed role with Youth Justice New South Wales. New South Wales will continue to deliver its New South Wales Mental Health Workforce Program traineeships, that's a mouthful, um, and uh, Deputy Commissioner uh, Tom Brightson would be the uh, best person to speak on that. But um, the trainees undergo supervised workplace training and clinical placements in over three years while studying. And I've actually seen that in action when I was living in Wagga uh, with CSU. Action 9 requires the Mental Health Commission to develop a method to evaluate the inclusion of lived experience with the mental health and social service organisations. The Commission will work closely with BEAM, mental health carers and other important partners to develop the, the evaluation across the next three years. The lived experience workforce will be important contributors to this work and specifically the Aboriginal lived experience workforce. The Commission anticipates hearing from Aboriginal workforce and community about the need to understand what is required to support access for people living in rural and remote communities. Action 14 requires the Mental Health Commission to lead the co-design of a joined up wellbeing and mental health support model. This work is underway uh, and many of us have been a part of it, which is a real privilege and has included the voices of lived experience, including Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people with the lived experience from rural areas. The co-design work has identified several focus areas. These include the increase in peer workers and Aboriginal health workers is required to assist people to find a way through the complex mental health and physical health system in ways that are culturally safe and responsive. A diversity of peer roles is also required so that supports are available to a wide range of people that represent the people who live in New South Wales. A flexible support option should also include online access, after hours access, a warm peer line and a range of informal and formal psychosocial supports. Now that was helpful and I'll hand back to Daniel for our final question. Thanks Jenna. Uh, our last question is will this only be a program report or will initiatives across the sector and in law reform also be presented? Uh, to answer this, uh, the purpose of uh, Living Well in Focus is to reinforce a whole of government approach to mental health reform in New South Wales. And so all government agencies have been asked to reflect and respond to its recommendations. This includes the Communities and Justice Cluster. The release of the current report is to describe how agencies will deliver on the 24 actions in Living Well in Focus, but this reporting is not st static. The Commission aims to provide updates on how Living Well is being actioned and showcase initiatives and examples of good practice and partnerships through our stakeholder communications, such as these webinars, through engagement with the public via our website media presence and through advocating for our community and the voice of lived experience on the various government working groups we are members of. This is a stock take report of what agencies have commenced or plan to do. There will be reports following at years three and years five and at the end of the five years person, uh, at the end of five years. Thanks to everyone who submitted such thoughtful questions and I'll now hand over to Catherine to finish things up for the day. Um, in particular, thank you to uh, our esteemed commissioner, Catherine, and our other deputy commissioners um, who participated uh, and as well as uh, Director of Reform, Julie Dixon. Um, thanks to those for submitting the excellent questions and everybody who joined today. Um, on the screen is a reminder of the support available 
and a reminder to use your natural supports that are around you that help you get through your everyday struggles as well as the you know the good things in life all the best everybody and we hope you have a safe and happy holiday period we're looking forward to getting to know uh getting it back out into the community and getting uh physically out there to see everyone in 2022